You know, all of a sudden I had poison ivy pop up all over my body. I, I must have itched my eyes. And then I went inside and took a pee, Mike. Um, <laughs> if you're wondering where else I have it other than my eyes. Oh, yeah, baby. What's up? We're back. It's right. Chris Sims on button. Ahmed Fareed's here. Raise your hand if you have poison ivy on your schlong. I do. Yes, that's me. Yes, if you're not watching on video and you're just listening, my hand is in the air. Yes, I have a swollen right eye. I have a little bit of poison ivy in the crevice of my left eye. And yes, I touched a vine. Don't know what I was thinking. I was so impressed with the vine eight days ago. I came inside the house. Yeah. Took my gloves off. It was a cold day. I must have rubbed my eyes. I went and took a pee. Three days later, I had poison ivy in those three spots. It's been very <laughs> annoying ever since. How are you? Good to see uh, you. Of, of all places you didn't raise to your touch hands. your hands. I don't have poison ivy. Oh, darn it. No, darn I don't. <laughs> of, all, of all places to have it, You're right. I think the two you would want the least are the eyeball and... Wait. The man area. I didn't even get into. The, yeah, you're right. I, you're right. Those, those are the probably, two places. Probably like, two. if you were like, what two places do you not want to get poison ivy? Yeah. Those would be the well, two. Well, butthole would be tough too. Okay, <laughs> like, if we're going to be transparent about this conversation and start this off with a whammy, but I think that's a that would be hard. Wiping but, sure. that would be itchy, and you'd be like, damn, I got to wipe, and it's itchy. But I think that's a distant third. That's a distant I do think third. It, yeah. You're I right. Mean, it would not be pleasant. No, it would not be pleasant. All right. So if you've made it this far in the podcast, you just learned a whole lot more <laughs> about just, Chris and us. They're turning the volume up. They're, they're ready. I thought we were going to talk about me getting a tan in Florida, but oh. I, we'll just skip over that. So wait, you, you know? did go to Florida? Yeah, I did go. To, I actually did go to Florida so, with the family. I had a week uh, off. Where'd yeah. you go? Uh, Orlando. Area. I was going to get there. I'm sorry. I'm yeah, just you sorry. went to no. Universal Studios. Well, we just spent too much time talking about your Damn, nether, well, nether just regions. vacations everywhere. Vacation uh, in Virginia, then there's vacation in Florida. Yeah, I mean, holy shit, vacation, vacation, vacation. <laughs> but we're back. We're back. We're Would back you, now. Did you Disney World and that uh, whole thing? Universal. Universal. Company man. All right. We got four Harry, free tickets. Harry it was Potter. awesome. Yep. Went through some Harry Potter stuff, Minions things as well. Right. Uh, I love the Minions. Uh, Jason Bourne, Stuntacular. Whoa. That's his name, right? Jason Bourne? It is, yeah. Yeah. That was super cool. Okay. Yeah, highly recommend. But now we're back. Did you not go to Disney World just because it's owned by it's an ABC affiliation? Or ESPN. You just... We can't commingle there. Okay. We did go to the Disney Springs, <laughs> which is like the free area. You cheater! But... <laughs> you cheater! <laughs> but there were no photographs of me there. I made sure of so, that. So we don't yeah, really know. So it won't be on okay. the internet. All right, cool. Uh, okay, we got th we got through all that. Yeah. First question: We got to ask me anything. Um, we're going to get into something that you talked about with Mike Florio. Some actual yeah, breaking we news get here at some point. Yeah, right. Um, but while we're on the topic, and just right. to close the loop, uh, Voho Mar says, why would you touch a dead tree? That's a really good question. Okay, Voho Mar. Well, so don't why did you don't do ask me questions that are logical. Mm -hmm. All right. That's the first thing I'd like I I don't know. I really it was it's it's a I knew the tree's dead. Yeah. There's a gigantic vine on the side of it. And I just happened, like I said, to be walking around with the family in the yard. We'd kind of got a walk on a Sunday afternoon, right? So I was walking past this part of the yard and I mean was right I was there. I was just there in front of me, and He's it was there. impressive to be like, "Look at this thing growing up this tree. This thing's unreal." Didn't even cross my mind sure. that it was a poison ivy thing or anything like that until I then went to the doctors, and they they were like, "So have you been touching any vines or anything like that?" And that's when the bell went off. I went, "Oh my god!" Go, I love touching vines. That's I all I did, did, and I did. That's when they were like, "Yeah, well, that's what you probably did that." Blah blah blah. And that was that. So okay, all not, right. not the best decision. You may never do it again. That might be your last time uh, touching a, a dead tree. Or well, a vine. it'll be the last time I put my hand on a vine. I can tell you that. That's sad, kind of. You know, yeah. like that chapter of your life is over. I know it's over. You know, you got to put close the chapter every now and then. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I won't be swinging from vines. I could literally talk about this all day. <laughs> I mean, that's a great uh, one. But, uh, Matt Casey was in the chair for Pete, who's getting a well deserved. Time yes, off, yep. even though he's still working, like you. Oh, all you, all yeah. you guys are like, I'm off, but I'm still working. Yes. But um, so Pete is not here in the building. Matt is with us. Uh, first thing you talked about on uh, the Mike Florio show, PFT. <laughs> <laughs> You're <laughs> on a roll this today. morning. <laughs> um, th this is crazy too. So Mike heard this, you heard this, yes. and for the full video, you can go watch it on YouTube or go on Peacock and watch the show too. So we won't get into as deep as you did there, but this is a huge rumor. That the Dolphins were trying to pursue Sean Payton as their coach, Tom Brady yeah. as their quarterback. Right. Um, but it was, you know, kiboshed, you know, in no small part because of the Brian Flores thing happened. It could have been we other think things so. too. We're not 100% sure about that part of it. All right. There, there's certainly that thought that is out there that there was the kibosh was put on it because of the Flores situation and all that. Now, why and all that, that still is yet to be determined. So, so many questions here. Yeah. Does this mean that Tom Brady wants to come back? Does this mean that Sean Payton, you know, 
didn't want yeah, it's like what what what's going on well here? yeah i know what, it's, what it's, it's a crazy the... one it really is you know and this is where me and florio were, were a good combination because he got wind of this story a little bit right and now i kind of went like whoa okay that's crazy so i started to like all right wait i know some people connected to these situations and all that and i put some feelers out and things and then start to get information together and this was you know this is like the Thursday after the Super Bowl, right? So this is when we're f- when it's first falling on his radar. He kind of throws it on my radar. Right. Now I start to snoop around a little bit. We don't talk about it for like five or six days. I don't think it was until like last Thursday again until I texted him because I had some you know people I was waiting to hear back from and some other things too, right? And I texted him and just like you know basically like this this was real, like. Sean Payton, you know, from what I know, and the Dolphins have not denied this. The Dolphins have already, you know, uh, made or or told Florio after he ran this by them that they reached out to the Saints, Hmm. right, to talk about that. And that's where, you know, Florio first will tell you, reaching out, there wasn't just a blind reach out. Like, let's just spin the wheel and call a team and see if we can reach out to that guy and they'll let us. No. There's common interest there. So for people, that's how things are done in the NFL. So they reached out knowing that there was a common interest or somebody had already reached out prior. And this is after Sean Payton had already said he was leaving. This is already after he's retired and everything there. Right. But I think this was going on in the works, you know, before then. I think that's where we got to line up the, the timeline a little bit is, yeah, towards the end of him retiring, Flores being you know, fired in in Miami and all of that. Somewhere in that month leading up to that, these conversations were going on. Leads you to believe that Sean Payton just didn't want to coach the Saints anymore but had not closed the The door door on coaching somewhere else. Yeah, I I, I don't think, you know, Sean Payton, do I believe he's burnt out a little bit? Sure. Do I think he'd probably like a year off? Okay, yeah, I mean, sure. You know, also, let's not forget his, like, apprentice is bill parcells who's the king of like oh wait this team needs to be flipped over i'm out of here i'll see you in the next team and i'll do that there right that's what he did so yeah the 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 same situation no quarterback a lot of aging veterans some big contracts on the horizon salary cap hell right so yes he's good luck with that good luck with that right i I think that was like one okay i'm exhausted two oh crap this team's gonna take a few years to turn around do i want to be a part of that so yeah the Dolphins are a team that everybody looks at and goes, whoa, there's a lot to like about the Dolphins. Yeah, we got to make the old line a little bit better. You know, Tua, certainly there's that question, right, all that. But a, a Sean Payton offense would fit Tua in a lot of ways, I think. So, yeah, he looks at that team and probably goes, wow, bam, that's mm-hmm. it. Now, the Brady aspect is, of course, the other aspect of this. And everything I've been led to believe is that, yes, this was a – not, I don't want to say a package deal, but some sort of a deal together where, yeah, Brady, from everything I was told here, is was going to be given basically the, the, the leeway to di- think about it till about June or July, whether he actually wanted to come back and play for the Miami Dolphins. Given the leeway by but, who? But like the Sean Payton, if he was there, the Dolphins, they were going to let him have his, like, okay, you're not sure you want to definitely play right now. We don't need an answer till June or July what or about somewhere the, there. What about the Bucks? Well, then that's the other th- part of this. Now, these are things that I haven't confirmed yet, but have heard from people that I know that it sounds like, and at least from where I'm standing, and, and I think Florio is the same way, that there was more than just reaching out to say hi, that there was some tentative talks here about what we were going to exchange for these players. And that's what I was led to believe as well. You know, that there was some talks about what was going to be sent to the Saints for the rights for Sean Payton. That there was talks about, you know, what was going to be sent to the Bucks, you know, to Jason Light for for Tom Brady. Hmm. Brady, we know, is building the house in Miami, right? There's a connection with Brady. First of all, Brady's going to love Sean Payton, so there's that aspect. I mean, Brady Payton's a lot like a Bill Belichick. He came from the Bill Parcells School of Thought, right, So the school of coaching. So there's all that there, too. What a lot of people don't know also is Brady, the year he went and signed with the Buccaneers, the Saints were very much in the conversation of a team he might have signed with that year. If Drew Brees decided not to come back or I think like – you know, ruffled some feathers with I want one more money or a different contract. The I that know that Brady and Manning and I mean Brady and Manning, Brady and Sean Payton right. and the Saints, that was a thing on the radar. 
So, again, I don't know all the specifics here, but I do know that I'm on the right track here and mm-hmm. that Brady and Sean Payton to Miami 2022 football season was a thing that's more than on the radar screen. Again, the the uh, what's Beal's name, Matt Casey from Miami, the damn – the second owner in line from Stephen Ross, you know, there's always been the talk about him. You know, they want Brady down there. Ross, a Michigan guy. Beal is a guy that's supposedly been very aggressive. Brady, everybody knows, is mentioned in the Flores lawsuit right. when they talk about Ross. Bill, you know, your your yacht come up to my yacht. That's Tom Brady. Right, so there's a lot of things there too that wouldn't look great in the optics of the NFL as well. Wait, we fired a black coach. We're going to illegally reach out to a coach that's on another team and try right. to get him work the back channels and also do that within a player who's not a free agent and break a lot of rules within the NFL that way too. That's where it got dicey, I think, in a lot of ways. And I don't know exactly exactly yeah. where the lawsuit or what happened there to throw everything off kilter. Yeah, does your gut tell you Bruce is the name you were looking for? Yeah, Bruce Beal. Right. I don't know why I didn't want to say that. I was. I chickened out. Yeah, you, isn't you, there an old coach named Bruce just, Beal? Uh, uh, Bielema. You're, th- you're thinking of uh, Brett Bielema. That, yeah, that's what it was. Or uh, uh, Beal, the basketball player. Uh, maybe that's what I am. Yeah, Bradley. Bradley Beal. Beal. That's yeah. maybe it's a lot of bees there. <laughs> yes. Or Bruce Beck, yeah. who we were talking about earlier. There's a lot of Bruce. <laughs> NBC Sports, right? Uh, um, uh, so yeah. So if this Flores lawsuit does not happen, yeah, do you feel like this? Peyton and Brady to Miami has uh, a good chance of happening. I, I feel like yes, from what I've been. Wow. Yeah, I feel like that Sean Payton would have been a real thing, and then the Brady thing would have been on the radar. Let's see how Brady feels about the situation. So what? He just doesn't want to be in Tampa anymore. I, I mean, I, again, here's the the other thing that's out in the NFL world as far as in the the rumor the w- rumor world. Yeah, is that yes, he was. You know, they are building the house in Miami. It does seem like that's where the family's going to relocate. And then the other thing you hear consistently throughout the NFL, and Bruce Arians, I think, had to answer some of these questions last week because there's been the rumors out that, you know, Brady was kind of sick of Bruce Arians to a degree. Hmm. And I think most people in the know or, you know, know the gossip mill in the, in the NFL, that that's a thing. That A lot of people think that there was a little bit of a turbulence there that, you know, Brady and Leftwich would be in control of the game planning all week long, and then Arians would come in on Thursday or Friday and kind of change things around and cross things out, and we're not going to do this. And they were like, wait, you weren't here, and we have rhymes and reasons. And I think that certainly threw a wrench in, you know, the situation to a degree. All right, so last thing. Yeah. Do you think Brady comes back? I eventually? think the door is open. Like we're, a month ago, I would go, no way, it's over, blah, 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 blah. It's over. Mm-hmm. Uh, I mean – it's it's obviously not over. He was obviously finagling himself to be have the opportunity to be in a situation that he really liked or wanted. And that to me is now where I go to, well, if that situation and we get to June or July and he starts to go, damn, okay, you know, hey, I love the family and all that, but shit, I miss throwing footballs and I can still throw it and do all those things. Right. That's where I just go, okay, so w- w- what's 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 going to stop that like when he wants to do it? I know people always go, what else does he have to prove? He doesn't care about proving anything. He loves playing football. He loves kicking ass and taking names. He loves adding to the aura and lure of Tom Brady. That's enough. I get it. I, I Like I said today earlier in the show, I, I, I grew up with a guy that played in the NFL for 15 years. He won, a su- won two Super Bowls, an MVP. You think, oh, that's be enough. It's never f- enough. It was year 16, and he was like, f- I, let's go out and throw some balls, Christopher. I might sign with a team today. I know it was the most fulfilling career a man can ask for, but I want more. I and mean, that's just the way you guys are made. And that's where – that's will be the ultimate test. When you get to that time of the year with Brady, can he really hang it up and close the competitive door that way? Yeah. Uh, especially if, like, a situation that really makes sense arises, which I think is where he was trying to get into Miami. I think ultimately I want to say no, he's not going to because he's not going to be able to set up a situation the way that's perfect. The one thing I will say with Brady, here's the one way I see it happening, right? And it's a little like Drew Brees this year. Like New England, 10 and 3 next year, you know, 9 and 4 up in the top of the AFC East. Mac Jones gets hurt. Oh my gosh. That is when they might get the bat phone and Brady might be like, okay, I'll go back to New England and do that. 
let's, let's see if we can do it. Go playoffs, make a run. He'll go, I'll do it. You go, but, he'll go trade Mac Jones first. But yeah, yeah, yeah. What? Right. <laughs> you have to. But I don't think bring the door's in totally. What? I think the doors are there's a crack. That's all I'm gonna say. That's, um, that's all I'm gonna say. That's but fascinating. Peyton Brady, Miami Dolphins was a real thing. A hundred percent. So there could still be, you know, Brady is still in the quarterback carousel, which yeah. we could have a lot of quarterbacks in Holy that situation. Shit, we can. Uh this offseason. This question comes from Goal Line Stand Two. Excited to have you back, Chris and Ahmed. What teams do you look at as instant contenders if they add a Rodgers, Russ, or Watson? And what trade packages do you think would make that happen? All right, so Rodgers, Russ, Wilson, teams that become contenders right away, right? And, like, let's, you know, realistic, the teams mm-hmm. that are in that conversation. All right, Miami Dolphins are going to be in that conversation. I would mm-hmm. say, still think they're going to be it. They can say whatever they want for Tua or whatever, but if Rodgers got offered up to them for a good deal or Deshaun Watson once again, I, I have a hard time thinking they're not going to accept that deal. Right. So I do, I do look at them right off the bat to go, yes, game changer. All right. The other team I look at to go that automatically goes into another is the Philadelphia Eagles. Philadelphia Eagles are got a lot of things that a, a franchise quarterback should like, right? I know right. they're saying they're going to stay strong with Jalen Hurts. I, I I I know enough to know that their their radar's still on. They're still looking out there. And you tell me like if Russell Wilson or Deshaun Watson don't become available for a good trade, they're going to go no, it's no thanks. We got Jalen Hurts. Absolutely. F- not, and okay? they've got the three first round picks. Exactly. Too. So they got some stuff to trade along with the Miami Dolphins. This is why I brought them up, these two teams up first. Thank you for covering my ass there. Yeah. Because the Dolphins have, I believe, this year, what do they have? Two this year, two in the second. They got a lot of picks either way. Maybe it's just one pick in the first round this year and doubles in the second. So they can manage. I look at the Washington foot the commanders. The commanders. Are you are you on board? Are you feeling I'm like I'm cool that's- with that. I'm cool with it. I mean, the fact that they couldn't get the years they won the Super Bowl right is a little concerning. I mean, that's like, I don't even know what the f*** to say about that one. <laughs> like, you're going to just break the rules for the whole Super Bowl era and yeah. go, we're going to count the year of the Super Bowl instead of the season. That yeah, made no sense. That's not how it works. Uh, but I'm down with that. I look at them, game changer that way, to, to be that type of guy. Um, the Pittsburgh Steelers, I'm going to throw in that conversation as well. No doubt about it. And... The most obvious one that's the most set up for the Super Bowl is the team we just talked about, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. The yeah. Tampa Bay Buccaneers are still going to be the most talented team in football next year, or at least in that conversation. So, you know, again, people are I, – I, th- I think we're all crazy if we think they're going to go with Blaine Gabbard this year. Their team is in the window to win the Super Bowl. And if they can get a marquee player like a Watson or Russell Wilson, they're going to make a play. And I would be shocked if they don't try to make a play with the state of their team is at right now. All right, so what about the Green Bay Packers? Mm-hmm. If they lose. Denver Broncos would be another team I'd yeah, probably Denver throw Broncos, in there. Yeah. Who Aaron Rodgers could sure, go to. Sure, that would be the number one team I'd pick them to go to. Um, and if the Green Bay Packers lose lose Aaron Rodgers, I mean, maybe you lose Devontae Adams too. I don't know. Maybe maybe you're able to keep the one of the top wide receivers. Yeah, they with have you. the franchise tag available for Adams. But, but that's right. a, either way, he's going to be pissed if Rodgers goes and he doesn't know he's got like a quarterback that's worth the damn coming into town. But is that a spot that if you get a Russ or a Watson, you're okay? Obviously, it is. It would help. It is. It's definitely a spot. Yes. The question is: Is did are they going to want to go there? That, that that to me is the question. See, that's what people miss out in Green Bay a little bit. You know, again. Yeah, their their salary cap situation is not the greatest. They have a reputation for not signing free agents. You know, they already didn't go all in on the last quarterback. So now, what quarterback's going to go up there and go, well, oh yeah, I can go up there, freeze my ass off, and they'll never go all in. All right, great. So there's that aspect, and then you got the Jordan Love aspect too. Where, I mean, if they trade Aaron Rodgers and don't try to go. With Jordan Love. Don't you think that's going to make them look foolish? Even more foolish? Wait, the guy we just traded away. We traded him away because of the guy we got here. But we're not going to play this guy here. If we're going to give the best away quarterback away for the guy we're not going to play here that we drafted to replace the best quarterback who we gave away. But we're going to keep him here and not play and bring somebody else yeah. in. That, to me, is where you have a, little, a lot of political pressure on yourself yeah. that way. The only way you wouldn't do that is if you don't want to compound a mistake. Right. If you if you realize if you've lost Rodgers because he didn't want to be there anymore. And that's clear. It's like we would have had him here forever. He no longer wanted to be here. We couldn't make it work. Yeah. And so he had to leave. And after two years of evaluating it, we don't feel like Jordan loves the answer. Like, that's the way I think you get out of it. You don't you don't want to 
make a, a mistake. If you don't feel like Jordan no, Love's the answer, if you're sold like, he's not the guy, you're right. You don't try to, to double move. down on it. Right. I know. And teams make that mistake a lot. You're right. But I, I, I yeah, I wonder how they feel. And yeah, the optics and the political pressure around that situation are going to put more pressure on them, certainly. So, you know, again, no, I don't think Green Bay is as, as pretty as some of those other teams that I just mentioned mm-hmm. there. I don't. Yeah. You think Rodgers has made them look prettier than they are? I do. And I think they're good. Don't get me wrong. I, I still think it's, 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 uh, but I just don't look at it as a place where the high end free agent quarterbacks are going to look at it and go, oh, that's where I want to be. Oh, wait, that's an open spot. I want to go there. You know, again, the other teams I mentioned, I think there's more exciting things there in a lot of ways, especially for the quarterback play. I mean, yeah. Denver specifically, we know they have great receivers. They got a pretty good tight end, good running backs, good offensive line, a coach there that can roll out the red carpet and make Rodgers feel comfortable. Like it's not too different from Green Bay. Hey, look, it's still the offense. And, you know, we still know how to treat you. We're, we know how you like to be treated. Mm-hmm. And yet you're just got a Bronco in your head and we're it's cold, orange and blue. Still feels like Green Bay. Right. You know, yeah, the exactly right. Fans. Yeah, that is where I could see that. Yeah. Um, but what was I going to say there? Uh, I was going down a path of something there, and I lost what I was oh, my train of thought. I but 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 um, I wasn't in your head. Well, properly. no, compared to Green Bay to some of the other teams is yeah. what I'm like. You know, again, Philadelphia, top top notch offensive line. Mm-hmm. You have good tight end. You have three receivers that are pretty damn good. You have one that could be a superstar in Devontae Smith. Mm-hmm. You know, Watkins is really damn good. Rieger is been underwhelming for our first round pick but it's still dangerous so i look at that and go oh i'd take that over the green bay i would sorry i know Devonte adams is better than everybody there but as a whole and then you look also let's go to like washington i mean washington's got a, a lot of talent down there too there's a lot there right miami there's not much different there either of course tampa we know how talented they are so that's where i go no, Green Bay, I expect it to be Jordan Love. I don't think it's going to be one of those other guys. So a couple of things you touched on already. Yeah. So real briefly, Sifo Bain was asking more about the Bucks and what they should do at quarterback. Matt ha- Hassan Four was asking about the Eagles, and they both kind of asked, do they use some of their picks? Do they go trade up in the draft to try to get a quarterback? And you haven't looked would, at the you haven't looked but, at the no, quarterbacks not the tra- yet. Yeah, go sorry, go you ahead. You haven't looked at the yeah. quarterbacks yet. Right. Um, and you've talked about some possibilities they might have of getting one of the free agent top marquee quarterbacks. Yeah. So if they can do that, they're going to probably do that. Um, but from what you've seen so far, do you think there's a quarterback in this draft that is worth pursuing? Well, yeah. I mean, again, you know, the 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 kid from uh, Liberty, right? Um, uh, holy crap, I'm blanking. Malik. Malik, yes. Uh, yeah. Was uh, Willis. Willis. Thank you. I was yeah. gonna say Wilson. Bruce. <laughs> Malik Wilson. <laughs> hey, I like the kid from Ole Miss. I do. I think I, he was still to me yeah. is the most impressive thrower of the football, but like, do I look at those as being the right fits for those teams? You know, no. Okay, maybe. Hey, you want to you want to do something where like, hey, we definitely want to go with Jalen Hurts another year, but maybe draft a Matt Corral, you know, somewhere in the first or second round or do something like that and kind of have him on the afterburner. I, I don't know. Okay, sure, maybe. Yeah. But I don't look at those two teams like that. The Bucks are ready right now. A rookie quarterback. Like, you need a quarterback uh, that can go in, and you could win two more Super Bowls here. I mean, you put Deshaun Watson on the Bucks, they're going to be one of the best teams in football. All right? So they're, they're, that's, that's to me where I just, okay, you got to have that. Um, the Eagles – if I was the Eagles, no, I'm not looking to go to the, the draft either. I'm looking to go to the free agent market. Mm-hmm. I am. Both of these teams are ready now. You know, again, I know Jalen Hurts did some good things. But, again, I'm not sold on Jalen Hurts. You know that. You know, again, like we saw in the playoffs, when they just can't dominate in the run game, you know, that's when you go, oh, okay, so now what are they going to do? You know, because they're not good enough in the past game. He's not accurate enough. His release isn't quick enough. His arm's not strong enough. So, yeah, they're going to be able to win against a lot of teams in football because of how good their offensive line is, and they're a good team. But that's where I question the the Jalen Hurts thing, and that's where I look at those two teams, and I'd go, no, those the Eagles are on the precipice of really being ready and jumping back into a window of being like, no, we're going to be here for a little while. Right. And the Bucks are here. And that, to me, more smells like, no, free agent quarterback that's been there, done that, proven commodity over we're not sure what we're going to get out of an underwhelming rookie quarterback class. And we'll have time to see if your opinion changes on some of those rookie yeah, quarterbacks. Yeah, don't hold the me more, to any of this right now. It. This is totally TV scouting right now. I see, have not even gotten into 
into that aspect CJ yet. CJ Easterday, you answered his question. was basically talking about your early evaluations of some of those quarterbacks, so hopefully that answers your question there. You did have Kyler Murray as the number one quarterback when he came out yeah. in the draft. Yeah. And R. Del Sardo, uh, Sardo, L- R. Del Sardo, Hey, Art Del Sardo. R. Del Sardo. Hey, Art Sel- Del Saldardo. <laughs> uh, says, love the pod. Chris, has your uh, position or ranking of Kyler Murray changed since last offseason? Always felt like he's a little overhyped because he adds flair to simple plays that most times he doesn't need to add flair to. Also gets worse as the season goes on and doesn't play well banged up. There is a lot of... Um, there's a lot of Kyler hate out there and some reports out there that you know not a great teammate or whatever, and who knows how believable those reports are. Um, but, yeah, what's your evaluation now of Kyler Murray? Well, I think he's – you know, first off, I think our Del Sardo says a lot of good things there. I mean, I understand. There's, I think there's a lot of people that think he's overhyped a little bit. That's a little bit of the, you know, feasting on the poor, all the great highlight plays come against, you know, yeah, early, middle of the year against the teams that aren't maybe as good. And then we get to the, you know, okay, now it's time to be good against the really good teams, and it kind of disappears. I understand that. He does play small like we saw in the playoff game. Yeah, he's not going to be good playing banged up. He can't have it all. I don't know. You know, he just can't have it all. He's got a great arm, and he's got two rockets up his ass, so he can really fly. And they're, they play a certain style of football that has put him in the power, power position there, where he has leverage over their football team. You know, my, my rankings of him – you know, again, I can't remember. Last year, I want to say I had him like six, maybe seven, right in there, right? Somewhere in that range. I don't think he's going to be too far from there. I don't. I got to kind of look at this and reevaluate a little bit as far as, yeah, there's some new names I'm going to throw in here probably in the top 10. But with Murray himself, no, I still think he's top 10 ish for sure. There's still special things about his game that. You know he can, that other quarterbacks can't do, and that are problems for defenses when they game plan. The question the, is, can he do them consistently enough? That and that to me is not, it's not always a Kyler problem. That gets into something you and I talk about a lot during the year, yeah. right? The offense has got to help him. It's very predictable. It really is. That's a big as big a reason as any of why the highlight plays and the offense doesn't function well towards the end of the year. Teams catch on. They know what to expect according to personnels and formations. They do it that way. And then, okay, now you take a few of their tricks away, and their meat and potatoes offense in Arizona It's just not that special. And that's where, you know, again, it's going to be the third offseason in a row. I'm going to go, Cliff Kingsbury needs to add more to his offense. He needs to hire some people that are outside the realm of his coaching tree to add and infuse a few more ideas into his system uh, so they don't fall into these little stale points like we've seen the last few years. Matt reminds me you had him at seventh last year, yeah. just below Lamar, okay. just ahead of Matt Stafford. Okay, just ahead of Matt, so yeah. seventh is a pretty good over-under where he'll be again this year. I yeah, think. right. And I think you know it's going right. to be right about there. It's probably going to be a spot lower or two. Yeah. I mean, again, when you got to take into account that you know Stafford was still damn good, right? Man, but I'm, you'd still probably put Kyler over Stafford. I think probably the injury yes. history with Stafford. Yeah, and, there's all that. You know, there, there's definitely but, that. But but Stafford, the other thing Stafford does that is such a greater level, like we even saw in the Super Bowl, people around him in the pocket bearing down on him. He's a great under pressure thrower. He yeah. doesn't care. He doesn't look at the rush. If you know Matt Stafford's going to be healthy for the whole year, he's probably. I, 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 Kyler, I think right? you could you could probably trust him more right now than Kyler. Yeah, you know, again, Kyler is it's all going in the right direction. It fell apart towards the end of the year it wasn't just him it wasn't just that and you know I think with the emergence of Joe Burrow right into mm-hmm. the top five conversation for sure you know we still got Herbert and Josh out yeah he's going to be somewhere between seven and ten I'm going to say he's probably a spot or two lower of just you know off the top of my head okay all yeah. right you mentioned Joe Burrow right there yeah the Bengals uh made it one win away from winning a Super Bowl Eric Plumley says it's Bengals not Bengals which was an all 80s girls supergroup, Who Day Nation is watching you. Come on, man. I don't know if we've ever addressed this on the pod, I know. have we? No. You have a yes, we have. proclivity <laughs> yes. for saying bangles. Um, I'm sorry. I'm from New Jersey. That's I don't know. the that's way just you the do way it. it comes out. I don't know. It's like know? if you were British and had a British accent, you would say words differently. It's like, why can't being from New Jersey just be the same thing? I don't thing? know what it is. I just add that A in that second one there. I'm sorry. I mean, just see, so Larry Birdie you know, pronounces the Bengals just like so. There you go. <laughs> and my dad grew up right by the Bengals, yeah. right by them. 
I don't know why he says it, but it's in my head. Sorry. I don't mean to do it deliberately. It's truly just the way I talk. Well, it's part of the rebranding. It's part of the rebranding we've talked about for a long time, right? Yeah, we no, wanted them cool. to update their jerseys. They Joe did that. Joe Burrow's their quarterback. They look cool now. Yeah. <laughs> but maybe they can just be no, the Bengals to some people. Yeah. And it's like their nickname to you. Yes, they it's are. It's a new nickname. Right. And you're not stopping. You'll always do Bengals, which I like. I'm not, that. But I'm not doing don't, it deliberately. I think it's like how sometimes you say it. Ba- be Bengal you. fans. Nah, don't don't try to okay. change. Okay. Well, they think I'm doing it to like troll them. I'm like, no, I, I've been saying this since I was five years old. It, yeah. It's not no disrespect. I do that with a uh, name Elvin. So like Alvin Kamara. Yeah. I just pronounce it like it's an E. Elvin yeah, Kamara. Elvin. Yeah. Elvin. But that's yeah. I, I say that's from being from Michigan too. Right, that's right. just what my well, that's what I do. Yeah. And so sorry, I'm changing your name, but that's just my accent. Yeah, I got you. Okay. I know. Right. I can't change. I mean, yeah, I learned about I got too you know, much else going on. My family's from Kentucky. The first time <laughs> I met them, they were saying shit. I was like, What? Huh? What is that word? What? Y'all? You you yes what em? Huh? <laughs> so <laughs> all, all right. We got a couple more questions here from the homies. And they're gonna give you a victory lap. Whoa. So we're going to look at rookies at some point this offseason, which is one of my favorite things to do when you go position by position. Yeah. You look at tape. You you uh, sequester yourself from your family for, I don't know, probably a month to two months. Look at game film from all these college players for that long uh, and form your opinions. But let's look back here. Some rookie victory laps. Okay. Osama Bear Laden says, which one of these <laughs> oh, rookie quarterbacks will take the biggest jump next year? And he goes, by the way, it's Justin Fields. <laughs> Sims will definitely say Wilson, though. No, Fields is definitely one of the guys I look at for sure there. I I, I am going to go with Wilson. I mean, yes, I am. Fields, I mean, Fields, the year he played this year already it, it exceeded my expectations for sure. It, it definitely did. You know, again, he controlled the ball better than I gave him credit for. You know, even when he tried to throw with power, which was what concerned with me at Ohio State, when he went through the ball with power, the ball could fly anywhere. You know, the way he handles himself, the athleticism, all of it was really good. I, again, I, I know I'm the Zach Wilson guy, but I, I think I'm capable and I've shown enough through my history that, like, if I really didn't feel like it was him, all right, then I wouldn't say it. I, I like being right more than I do stubborn. And the Zach Wilson thing to me, again, just like I tell a million people up here all the time because we have Jets fans everywhere, Zach Wilson, the last four or five weeks of the year, was the best rookie quarterback out there. He was the best one. He made more legit in the pocket, big time throws than any of the other guys. He made a lot of outside the pocket, off schedule type plays there. And I just look at that after he came back from the injury. You know, them getting their offensive line in the right place. You know, you saw him have games with receivers hurt. He still played well. I mean, they went toe-to-toe with the Bucks, and he played awesome in that football game. I mean, he had a lot of great wow moments in the year, end of the year. I'm expecting that to continue. I am. I, uh, again, now after that, the guy that I think will make the next big – Trevor Lawrence can make a big jump because it was not a good year. You know, it wasn't. You know, I know we talked about it through you know, the, the, a few times towards the last five or six weeks yeah, of the you year. You liked his best plays. I liked his best plays, but there was a f- too many games where you went, whoa, like that was way too many missed throws or way too many turnovers. And then I couple that with like what I told you, I think or it might have been Paul, where, hey, I, you know, I, 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 I got somebody I talked to or multiple people that I talked to on every team in the NFL. And the one thing I always kept hearing – down the stretch, what I told you about Trevor Lawrence, I think I told you, it was just, you know, even in pregame warmups, everybody was like, wow, it just doesn't come out of his hands the same way as Zach Wilson or as consistently smooth as Mac Jones. You know, I literally had teams tell me, use the word embarrassing for Trevor Lawrence in some pregame warmups towards the end of the year. Not, doesn't mean anything, but so he has a chance to make a big jump. And you see what he's capable of with what he did in week 18 against the Colts, where he made some eye popping throws. Well, and if Kellen Mond plays like five snaps, that'll be a big <laughs> it's jump. It's a big jump. <laughs> he's, he's, he wins. Jury, jury's still out on him. Jury's yeah, still out. It definitely I is. I don't think the old coach liked him too It doesn't much. sound like it. Seemed like he just had something against him. There's definitely so. something there. No Room doubt. to grow. Uh, Tomas S. Pena, a regular writer in her. Regular to the Sims Unbutton podcast. Christopher, as a future GM, what were your favorite rookie victory laps this season? He goes, some I recall, Mac Jones, Tyson Campbell, Elijah Molden, Paulson Adebo, Christian Barmore, JOK. They are for real. Yeah, yeah, those are good ones for sure. Um, hey, my... Are you seeing your list here? Of my man, you? Jalen Phillips. Down to, yep, I got it. I got okay. it here. I'm all good. Thanks. Jalen Phillips in Miami was phenomenal. Yep, that was against the grain. 
right? Because yeah. most people, uh, well, he was he people was, liked him. He had but injury history right. and like concussion history and some things that were suspect about him that way. Mm-hmm. I love my the Tyson Campbell one. Yes, hey, he was he was phenomenal, no doubt about it. Um, I was wrong about you know the other corner up in Green Bay, Stokes. He was really good. I should have made made him higher in my rankings. Um, yeah, but overall, when I look at it, you know. For the most part, position-wise, um, I'm happy with everything except for running back and where I messed up with, like, Javion Hawkins from Louisville. Yeah. Well, All there right. was more information on him that you didn't know, I there guess. Was a, I there was a little of that. that. I think he's another one where I think if I got to see the person, I would have changed me, too, for, for how small it sounds like he was. So that's where I'm a little hamstrung at times with that. Michael Carter was good, though. You he were higher on him the great. most. He was awesome, and especially towards the end of the year. He he had some some big-time flash moments. Um uh, Jalen Waddle would be one I'd look at to go. Damn, I should have had him higher, right? Mm. He proved to me that he was. It's it really Jamar Chase, then Jalen Waddle, then Devonte Smith was the way that receiving, you know, class paired out this year yeah. as far as on the field. Um, but yeah, everything else I'm pretty, pretty happy with. I well, like the Wusu coming off the edge. My man, uh, Jason Away. Yeah, the, which uh, was crazy. I mean, you you were he like had no how? sacks at a Penn State. Remember, everybody was like, "How you never had a sack oh, yeah. at Penn State?" It yes. was like, I don't know. He's kicking the shit out of everybody. I see him. Mm-hmm. You know, college football it's hard to get sacks. Every pass is an RPO or a screen. Nobody holds the ball and has a drop back pass game. So that's where that's a little uh, misleading. But but I was happy. You've got some uh, you got some victory laps to take, and we'll get through all of those when you do the position group. It's always a good part of the beginning of the podcast is when yeah. you look back yeah. on it and see how you did. Definitely the previous year because I think you had some you had some real hits this past year. All right, so those are the questions from the homies. We'll do that plenty during the offseason. Yeah, we there, got a lot of that. There comes a time where we come in and Pete looks at me and then I look at you and then we call up Matt Casey and we go, what are we going to do today? And we go, we're just going to do questions from the homies. Yeah, and yeah. So that helps us out big time no doubt. throughout the offseason. So no we'll doubt. do that plenty. Um, you guys get involved as you always do very well. Now it's time for the Ahmed Farid Under Talked About Awards. So what these are, Love it. and these are uh, nine players that I that I found, and then Pete nominated a few on his day off. I like as Pete's well. some of the nominations. Some of you the nominations of- were teams that there were definitely some players that I was going to throw out there for some love. All right, for so sure. we'll do that. So we'll do yeah. that. And I didn't go through every position, but I've got a lot of the main ones here. Yeah, cool. And so we'll start on the offensive side of the ball. And so basically, what this is is these are players that maybe we should have talked about more yeah. or the the media in general should have talked about didn't more. Didn't give given, them the credit they deserve. Didn't give them the credit they deserve. And we'll start at quarterback, and this is a quarterback that I think I bring up every time. Tom Brady. When, when we talk about it, yeah, <laughs> under-talked about it. Like, really, like how great was that year for Tom Brady? We don't talk about it enough. Um, no, it's a quarterback that I think is a solidly top-10 quarterback, statistically every year, just doesn't get the credit, and gets dumped on a lot, and maybe some from his own, you know, doing. Yeah. You know, who knows? I don't know who you're going with here. I think I do, but I don't, I don't know. Kirk Cousins. Okay. Minnesota Vikings. Yeah. Fourth in the quarterback rating, ninth in yards. He had the second best interception percentage, only to one Aaron Rodgers in the NFL. Didn't take sacks, fifth best sack percentage. Um, PFF had him as the sixth best quarterback in their grades. Um, but we talk about Kirk Cousins a lot of times, not necessarily on this podcast, but I think media in general, like he's a middle of the road quarterback or maybe yeah, even bottom that's wrong. quarterback. Right. Yeah. Um, and so not that he's the greatest quarterback ever, but I think it's under talked about how much better he makes the Minnesota Vikings. Agreed. Agreed. He's 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 easily the most dumped on quarterback for some reason. For I think when you match up the criticism compared to the play, you go, wait, the criticism doesn't match up with the quality of play we're getting here. You know, again, he frustrates people and I think, you know, at times because listen, the contract situation, right, people hold that against him because he was a good businessman and got his contract guaranteed. So for some reason, because of that, people expect, like, you signed that contract, you should bring us Super Bowls. All right, well, Minnesota's got more issues than Kirk Cousins. In fact, he's not their issue, right? And then I think, you know, to your point, too, you know, he well, – he gets. I feel like he gets underappreciated because there's no sex appeal with Kirk Cousins. He doesn't make highlight plays. He yep. makes the standard quarterback prototype plays, which are not standard and prototype, but he makes it look like that. But, yeah, he's a pocket passer. He's not going to be throwing sidearm lasers down the right sideline for 40 yards or running out of the pocket and making four people miss and then setting up and throwing a 60-yard post down the field. That's not what he does. But I think you said it right. He's top 10-ish. He's top 10-ish. I think if we took 32 
head coaches in football. I think you'd have a lot of them that got Kirk Cousins towards the bottom of their top ten. I think you'd have a lot that would go, I, he's nine for me. I'd mm-hmm. eight, ten, eight, eleven, fourteen, nine, fifteen, ten, eight. I mean, that's where he'd be. Kyle Shanahan seems no to doubt. like him a lot. Mich- and McVay loves him. They both would have done anything for him at one point in their career they love him because to me we're th- this is where those guys like him because they know they have a system right mm-hmm. so they know i'm going to be able to get people open because i'm smart and creative and i'll get the right players in the right spots and the kirk cousins in their offense they view as whoa that's dangerous because now they're going to listen to me they're going to listen to me and everything i say in my coaching so they're like an extension of me on the field and then they can physically when the play presents itself like, hey, I got you a guy open 20 yards over the middle, they're going to hit it. And that's what they love about Kirk Cousins. So, yes, that says a lot, too. I think that's the way you button it up. He seems okay enough for McVay and Shanahan. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I trust them Yes, right. in their quarterback evaluations. Right. Uh, Pete threw out a nominee of, and I agree with this one, too, Derek Carr. Sure. Raiders. It's the same guy. Fifth, it's the same thing. Fifth in passing yards this year. Right. Um, and you don't think of him as a top five because, I mean, they – have a decent enough running game, but not good enough to where it's just like, oh, that takes the pressure off. Like, you could make that argument for Kirk Cousins, right? Like, oh, that running game takes yes. a lot of pressure off of no him, doubt. the play-action passing game. You know, Derek Carr hasn't always had that, and he didn't necessarily have that this past year. I think a down year for Josh Jacobs. I'm so, glad, yeah, I like I like Derek Carr. Yeah. I think that's a good one. It's Kirk Cousins 2.0. Yep. You know, I Derek Carr, is a, it's a lot of the same thing, except he can make maybe a little more happen off schedule. But for whatever reason, the attitude, the way he acts, I don't know. People, not everybody loves it. And you Raider know, fans don't like it. I, like, I, 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 tweet, I tweet positively about Derek Carr every once in a while because I still have a following out in the Bay Area. I'm like, I think he's been you know, an MVP for this team, and Raider fans will laugh at me. So he splits there's a, that fan base. There's a, he definitely does. Yeah, there's a part, I, mean, I think some just look at him and think he's like a nerd or a dork. I don't, I don't really yeah. know. And yeah. Either way, I've been around him before. He doesn't he swear, but it. it's a, he you, don't have to he swear. you don't have to swear. Not at all. To be a, a cool person. And he's another guy that I would say is a top 10-ish. I mean, it does help. Yes. It'd be a little cooler if you swear. Were, but I said schlong earlier on this podcast. Does that help? <laughs> yeah, it does help. <laughs> you definitely went up in my book. Um, I'll, I'll link my wide receiver because it goes with my quarterback. Mm-hmm. And I, maybe this one doesn't qualify because he definitely was talked about. But I don't think he's talked about to the level that he really deserved in the year that he had this past year was Justin Jefferson. Yeah. And I think he did make all pro second team. But, I mean, he was second most in yards. To, I mean, only Cooper Cup had yeah. more yards than Justin Jefferson. Fourth in receptions. Um, PFF had him as the fourth best wide receiver. And so while he does get his due, I don't think people look at him as like potentially the top wide receiver or one of the top wide receivers in football. And the stats say that he was in that conversation. I, I mean, this year. He, he, he is in, in that conversation for me. You know, I mean, it, it's a weird position. First off, you know, yeah, people, they're usually all about the catches and the numbers. But yeah, Jefferson, for some reason, doesn't seem to get the credit or you think like Cooper Cup or Devontae Adams. It's like people don't really think like it's the same statistically. And I know it's it's every bit the same statistically and maybe actually a better physical specimen on the field. Yeah. You know, that's I, I mean, look at him. Yes. If, if you would if you could give me any of those three guys, Adams, Cooper Cup or Justin, I'm taking Justin Jefferson. Hmm. I, I am. And that's no I mean, those guys are awesome. But like he's he's big. He can make more happen after the catch than those guys. He's a little bit more of a deep target down the field. You know, he's a good route runner, maybe not quite as good as those two guys are, but not far enough enough where I'd go, oh, well, yeah, I, I, I can't deal with him. I'd go still, I would take Justin Jefferson. I'm with you. Hey, Debo Samuel doesn't get enough credit yeah. for the receiver position. I don't get that one. You know, the receivers, there's definitely a handful of guys out there that deserve a little more than, than what they get. Like should be talked about as potentially a top one or two receiver who are – maybe in people's top 10 instead so yes that makes sense i mean i asked michael parsons who was the who were through like give me two or three guys that just this year you couldn't believe when you saw them in person what kind of players they were dj moore that's another one mm. i'd go dj moore is not talked about enough i know i talk about him and you're probably like you need to shut up about him <laughs> but like again it's it's 1157 yards go to guy know you're going to go to him not a good running team and we don't have a quarterback but we can't stop that guy wearing number two at receiver that's when you know you're good it's just like hey wait he's the only guy they got over there and we know they're going to give the ball to him and we still can't stop it that's when you know you're in another level and that's to me he does not get enough credit that way so justin jefferson on my wide receiver side but some other guys in similar um categories as him running back i've got uh, I'm curious to what you think on this one. 
I didn't think I'd put him in here, but then I started looking at the numbers and what he did. Mm -hmm. I was like, maybe he deserves a little more talking about. Damian Harris, yeah, running back for the Patriots. Uh-huh. He was 10th in rushing. I mean, you look at his what he did production-wise, he had eight fewer yards than Derrick Henry in 17 fewer carries. Yeah. So, I mean, because he was splitting carries with Stevenson, who I think got a lot of love, and people thought, like, oh, it's time for Stevenson to take over yeah. and relegate Damian Harris to the bench where, where he belongs. But, no, I mean, he had the fifth most rushing yards over expected versus next-gen stats, so he was making a lot out of a little, according to their metric at least. I mean, 15 touchdowns. He was the third-best running back, according to to PFF, and uh, Tom Curran wrote about him, too. He said he's emerged as one of the Patriots' best young leaders as well. I can see that for sure. So Damian Harris, maybe we should have talked about him a little bit more. What do you think of that one? Well, we give him more credit for sure. I mean, he is a really good running back. He's not To me, he's not a superstar. Right. That's where I guess I look at it a little bit, to go like – Yes, I think there's some runs where if Ramondre Stevenson had the ball, he could make more with less than Damian Harris. But mm-hmm. he's still a really damn good running back that we do need to respect for sure. And you know, that's a good one by you. That's to me really under the radar, really. And but I'm you know, as I sit here and think about because like I didn't have anything sexy as far as running back where I was just like, oh man, right. you know, there's some guys that are really like underappreciated we have some guys that are kind of rising up the ranks or have some potential yeah harder to be underappreciated at a skill position yeah it is harder it is harder pete nominated melvin gordon i got you there mel i can understand that i mean he's he is he's kind of got swept swept under the rug because of javante williams same this year. thing they thought yeah. like, okay it's over for him it's right. changing up the guard and it's like no he had a legit role all season long, basically. Yeah. yeah. No, he's um, he's a really damn good player, Melvin Gordon. He's still got some some wear and tear left on the tires, for sure. I'm trying to think if there's anybody else out there that just were – that I'm missing or, we, you know, we're not thinking about that just deserves a little bit more credit. But I don't know if there really is as far as running back that I look at. By the way, Matt's flagging wear and tear still left on the tires as a as not a phrase. That's not a phrase? Yeah. <laughs> I don't think it is. You're Separate right. Separate it, and it's a, it's a compound <laughs> phrase that negates itself. I um, think. Hold on. <laughs> there was one running back I thought. Well, we got you know Rashad Penny, who I like the way he looked coming at the end of the year. But no, I guess – I guess that's that's it for the most part. Yeah. You know, I don't think Joe Mixon gets enough credit. That'd be one I tell you that's under talked about. Sure, he's under talked about. You know, and again, maybe underutilized in the it, Super Bowl. It, well, too. that too. <laughs> I mean, you could see he's a gifted runner. He's way bigger than people realize. Matt Casey will tell you mm-hmm. when he saw him on the pregame show, he was run, walking around the field. Matt Casey, one of the first things of the day that he said to me was. Mixon's Mixon's a big dude. Mm. Uh, Mixon's tall and he's more Jack than you think. And what he looks in his uniform, he doesn't get the respect he deserves. I would say. Thought it was like two kids in a trench coat or something like that. Uh, like, he's not that big. He's it's, it's a that. much bigger person than than people realize. All right, now to the big people on the offensive line. For me, under talked about. Uh, I've got two offensive linemen: one at center, one at tackle. My center, rookie for the Chiefs, Creed Humphrey. Yeah. Okay. Started all seventeen games for the Chiefs. Yeah. Uh, ESPN had him as the the top lineman for pass block win rate. They got a metric on that. Uh, PFF had him as the best center, and so I think he did get some love as a as a overachieving, maybe not overachieving, but just high exceeded achieving expectations. Yeah, definitely exceeded expectations. Right. He was the end of the second round as a draft pick, but I mean, he legitimately could have been. If you know Chase didn't have Jamar Chase that huge year like he had, he legitimately could have been considered a rookie of the year because. I mean, PFF had him as the best center, not among rookies, among all NFL players. Yeah, no, I know. He's so. he's legit. He really is. I, I'm, I'm, I, I, I'm with you there. You know, we hear center more times than not, Kelsey, Jason yeah. Kelsey kind of dominates the conversation, which I get it. He, he's really damn good. Still good. You know, J.C. Treader's good. Uh, Corey Lindsley out in, in um, the Chargers is good. Yep. I'm trying to think of just other ones that jump out to me. I mean, hey, they, you know uh, – um, the guy up in Buffalo's good. I mean, there, there's a few good centers to go around the league right now. Here's the one that I would say that I, I wish would get more credit just mm. to add to your list. Center? Ryan Jensen, right. Oh. That would be the one guy, the center for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. The, to me, that's a guy that not only is, is his value goes beyond the playing field a little bit. He gives that offensive line the edge they need. He's looks like the asshole of the group that makes them mean and nasty. And, you know, for that position, he's a mauler. He really is. So yeah. uh, I, I do like him. Wish he would get a little more credit. Another offensive lineman I have here is for the Raiders. Another Raider 
nominee? Colton, Colton Miller. Miller. Yeah, Colton course. Miller. Definitely. Good job by you. Played. Uh, he's definitely one of the best left tackles in football. He played every snap for the Raiders. Right. Third straight year he's done that. Yes. That's why uh, they paid allowed, him last Allowed year. just four stacks uh, in 730 pass block snaps. Still yes. just 26 years old. Yes. So Colton Miller, we should be talking about him. No doubt. Good job by you there. That, he was a guy I wrote, wrote down as well. He's without a doubt one of the best left tackles in football. In fact, you look at the AFC West. This is something I was thinking about when we were getting ready to come out here. AFC West, I mean, left tackles are not an issue out there. I could tell you that. Between Bowles and Denver, right, who's maybe the least of the group, Orlando Brown, who I think is very good. Mm. Orlando Brown got off to a little slow start with Kansas City. His numbers aren't – they lie. Mahomes got him in trouble more than not. That's where people got to look at. Some of the sacks and pressures, I know we broke it down a few times where we went, well, the pocket's perfect. Yeah. And Orlando Brown's blocked it off, but you're 20 yards deep behind the center, and nobody has to turn the corner. So I don't know what left tackle can block the guy. They can just run in a diagonal upfield and meet you. So, you know, he'd be one I'd throw out there to go. Doesn't get the uh, the credit he deserves either. Uh, I like your Colton Miller one, though, a lot. That was that was one I had right at the top of the list. Pete wanted to throw out Jordan Mailata from the Eagles. Da- too. Da- road grader, without question. I mean, he is a he is a killer. He is, no doubt. He, he kind of... He teetered off a little at the end of the year, uh, if I remember correctly, just in some of my notes and stuff. But still, definitely a guy that's that's top notch that doesn't get put in that conversation. I think all yeah, around second year player, yeah. former seventh round pick, and so that yeah, yeah. kind of takes a while to to love on some of those guys that are later round picks. You might think it's a fluke early on. So that's my that's my offensive side of the ball. Yeah. Anyone else you want to bring up on the offensive uh, side of the ball? You know, I you know I, I you know Brandon Sherford guard would be a guy that I you know he's one of the best guards in football. People don't talk about him enough. Um, you know, hey, we know the tight ends. We all know the the popular ones: Andrews, Wallers, Kelsey, yeah. Kittle. You could Goddard. You could throw in there. Goddard. I think. I you probably could throw him, into that list maybe. too. You're right. And then even Mike Gesicki is the other one I would throw in there. Gesicki to me is a weapon. He really is. He's got a little bit of a different style of play about him at the tight end position compared to most tight ends. All right. So that's the offensive side under talked about. But now we've rectified that because we talked about them a lot. Yeah. So maybe at this point, if we keep talking about they're them, overhyped. They're overhyped. We'll have to bring him down a notch. <laughs> Creed Humphrey, overrated. Uh, <laughs> defensive side of the ball. Let's start on the line. Yeah. Uh, with uh, a guy from Miami, Christian Wilkins. Okay. From Miami. I like that one. Um, so PFF had him as the uh, with the fourth most defensive stops among interior interior linemen this year. Aaron Donald one, Simmons two, Cameron Hayward three, and then you had Christian Wilkins at four. Started all seventeen games. 89 total tackles, and I read this somewhere, second most by an interior lineman in NFL history. That's amazing. That really is. Third year out of Clemson. So Does everything. We're talking about him. He's definitely one of the best interior D linemen in football. You know, yeah, he's not going to be the sack guy. It's not going to be Aaron Donald or, like, Chris Jones or DeForest Buckner. That's not what he is. He's more of a little bit of, like, no, I'm going to make a mosh pit here in the middle and nobody's going to move me, or I'm going to two-gap somebody. And that's where he's amazing at making the tackles. He has an unbelievable ability to be like, I'm holding you up. Oh, wait, the running back's coming here. Get off me. I'm going to make the tackle. And he's got leadership qualities. I mean, he's got it all. He is definitely one of the – heartbeat heart and soul guys of the miami dolphins defense good job by you there that was a good pick and I he like had the one. celebration of the year too with the worm celebration Ooh, the worm after was his good. touchdown it reception was. that big belly a lot of cushion for the push in there <laughs> uh pete's got three nominees on the on the line here and edge he threw dj reader in there for the Bengals, definitely or the Bengals. he's on my list um he threw a couple ends in here he threw max crosby in there who i think has been talked about quite a bit this year i agree I've but dis- maybe disagree not disagree with the, pete there right that seems yeah. like he's gotten his love yes right yes, yes. so don't let's not give him his love fine. right fine you, screw you, you max crosby <laughs> and then he's also got rashawn gary who i do think's gotten a lot of love too he got it at the end of the year at the end of the year pete's maybe. probably he, going there i i did write rashawn gary down too he deserved it more in the beginning of the year too well yeah saying. he got he got a little banged up at the end of the year uh, and then when he got back, I feel like it was like everybody listened to Chris Sims on button. They were like, hey, you know, Rashawn Gary's been the best player on the Packers defense all year. And I'd be like, yeah, I've been saying that for like 13 weeks. Yeah. Like he's he was the best player on their defense this year. Nobody was more disruptive. He was a force on the edge. He was a great pass rusher. He was great against the run game. I think that's a great one by you. I, okay. I, so that I mean, Pete, that uh, Pete. OK, fine. <laughs> Pete. Rashawn Gary, the DJ reader. Uh, and your Christian Wilkins so far, those are three that are that are awesome. Yeah, those. Yeah. Are, let's let's talk about them. Yeah, yeah. Max Crosby, no, <laughs> screw, screw that guy. Uh, let's go to. I'm going to go to linebacker here. Okay. 
And I just want to give some love to a guy who made 192 combined tackles the guy in, in the Atlanta. NFL this year. The guy in Atlanta. Foyer yes. Alunakun. The most underrated linebacker in football. Luakun. Aluakon. Aluakon. I think. Yeah, we want to get it right here. Foyer we want, if we're going to talk about him, we want to say yeah, it right. Aluakon. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Foyer. Yeah, that... right. 192 tackles combined. Seventh most all time. Ball yeah, I mean, yes, there's one Everywhere. more game this year than most years, but still, that's insane. Great in the pass game. He's a thumper in the run game. He is maybe he is definitely in the conversation for the, one of the most underrated defensive players in all of football. No Fourth year out it. of Yale. Yes. Former sixth round pick. Right. Pending free agent. Right. About to get paid. Right. They just released Dante Fowler right down there, which I think would probably be part of their, like, well, we got to keep this f- guy, so we got to pay him and all that. Yes, I would be shocked if they let him out the, the window there. Pete wanted, to gi- Pete wanted to give some love to another chief, Nick Bolton, mm-hmm. second sure. round pick out of Missouri. Yeah. Hey, those two young guys, they got a linebacker. Bolton's really freaking good. Gay is really good. That's why they just let Anthony was it Inch- Hitchens, right? They let him walk. Um, I, I'm, I'm, I like that a lot. I do. That's a, that's a good one. Um, I, I'll tell you one that uh, Roquan Smith. I, I you know again I don't I don't even look Roquan Smith did he make All Pro anything this year I'm just gonna mm. look this up real quick, um, because either way he's All Pro quality to me. Yeah. All right. Roquan Smith is a guy to me is like it's like Devin White. It's a heat seeking missile in the middle of the football field. It's Eric Kendricks in his prime. Just wherever the ball is, here's some like muscled up six one guy that's coming with his ass on fire to knock your head off. So he did make second team all pro, Matt Casey's reporting. Uh, there we go. So there he is. Second team all pro. Okay, so he's getting his credit. He is. Mm-hmm. Uh but yes, to me he's a guy that needs to be more regularly thrown in the conversation of best middle linebacker in football. All right. Defensive backs. I've got a corner, I've got a, a safety, and Pete's got some safeties as well. My corner, and I didn't expect this going in, from the Dallas Cowboys, Trayvon yeah. Diggs. We never talked about it. No, <laughs> Anthony Brown. Anthony Brown's cover. He can cover. So 17 passes defended, yeah. tied for the most, uh, fourth most in the NFL. He holds too much. So he had, on Thanksgiving, the, one of the biggest games, I mean, 50 million people yeah. watched it. He had four pass interferences. Right. The thing is, those were the only four of the whole season. year. Holy yes. shit, that's amazing! So it was like he looked bad in right. the, at the worst time for him to look bad. Um, but yeah, sixth year in Dallas, played almost 100 percent of the snaps, and uh, yeah, he might actually be cut by the Dallas Cowboys. But there are a lot of people when you read their their websites think that Anthony Brown went under the radar as a, as a reason why they were they were he is. he's really good, no doubt. He's really good. They have some under the radar DBs there. I mean, him, Jordan Lewis is a really good player in my opinion as well. I mean, really, they those they might not be able to make the plays Diggs can make. I think they can actually cover people better, hmm. if that makes any sense. And then the kid they got in the second round from Kentucky last year, to me, he looks like he's going to be a player too. So that might be part of the reason they can let go of Anthony Brown yeah. if they can't pay him or whatever. But I'm with you. He's a really damn good player. He definitely deserves a little more credit than, than he gets. And a safety. Yeah. My final player. Right. New Orleans Saints. Marcus Williams. Yeah, good, good one. Uh, he allowed only a 48% completion percentage, best of his career this cool. past year. Right, And this was what I found interesting is that the average depth of target that he faced was the most in the NFL. So he is like the deep support. He is the allows, middle deep guy. That no allows doubt. the other Saints defenders to kind of be a little more aggressive. Definitely. He is. He can cover incredible ground in the back end. So they let him play center field because when he turns and run, he can fly. He's got corner, like top end corner type speed out there. So, yeah, he's a really awesome football player. And he was franchised last year. He was, right? right. So that should tell you just what they think of him yep. right there. I mean, to pay that kind of money for free safety tells you he's pretty damn pretty damn good. Yeah, he's on the market again now. It'll be interesting to see what happens. Javon Holland. There. Yeah, that's what okay. Pete noted, Javon Holland. Yep. I mean, he, to me, is, is already in the conversation for one of the best safeties in football. Forget rookie or whatever else. All right. I'll throw another one I'm going to throw out in the DB category. Kyle Duggar, safety for the New England oh, okay. Patriots. He's yeah. another guy that, to me, is – is breaching that conversation of top safeties in football. I don't think everybody realizes it yet, but he is that damn good. Pete also wanted to throw the names Amani Hooker in there from Tennessee. Yeah, okay. And Adrian Phillips. Amani Amani is a phenomenal football player. Yeah. Adrian Phillips in New England, yes, really good. 
I'm not going to put him maybe in the class of some of these other guys we've talked about. He's been talked about appropriately. Yeah, yeah, he's been he's talked been... about appropriately. He does. He gets a <laughs> lot of love because Belichick tells everybody it's his favorite player. So every game you turn on in New England, they talk about Adrian Phillips as Belichick's favorite player. Yeah. So, yes, hey, they're all they're all good, no doubt about it. I still don't think Micah Hyde gets enough credit up there in Buffalo. He's one of the best safeties in football. All right, here's uh, just some other guys that – Yep. Uh, Jalen Phillips in Miami, another guy that I would throw in there. Jalen Phillips, again, rookie. That's great. He's already one of the best pass rushers in football. It's He's already there. He's up there in that combo. Harold Landry in Tennessee, along with Jeffrey Simmons, deserve more credit. Jeffrey Simmons is without question one of the best defensive tackles in football. Without question. You know, So that, that to me is you know one. Vita Vea. Again, people don't understand the dominance there. Yeah. Uh, and so he did it without a tooth. I know. <laughs> yeah, he did. That's right. <laughs> so those are ones that, you know, yeah, some other ones that jump out to me. A.J. Terrell in Atlanta. Yeah. Okay. AJ, He's starting to get some love. I, I, think you I hear feel some like people. people started to realize it a little bit last year. Rookie year was really good. Second year was even f- better. He's a baller. He's an island corner. Yeah. He really is. So, yeah, that'd be another guy that I'd say watch out for. He's going to be, you know, in that top five combo at corner soon. So that's what we like to do. We like to talk about players who are a little under talked about. That's and what then we once, do. Once they get over talked about, we, we bring Hood. them down. We, we bring them down. Yeah. Right? We will be the first to, uh, to slam them when they start to not produce. Uh, now it's time for the Homies Choice Awards. So you get your vote. Pete threw out a Google document. You had to sign in. You had to give up your email address, which now we have, and we'll email you all the time all with the offers time. to yep. Chris Sums Unbuttoned yep. and Points Bet. Pay us ten dollars uh, a day. We won't do that. I don't think. Uh, Four hundred and twenty-six ballots. So that's a good turnout. Yeah, good job by the homies there to, to vote on all these awards. And so let's go through them. Uh, one ballot had Joshua Patrick Allen for every single category. So that was one of the 426. I think that's deserving. He probably should be in every category. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He might not qualify for some of them, but, uh, um, but yeah, throw him, throw his name in the ring. Uh, this the, Pete said this did include playoff performance, so you could include I know. playoff and performance. I don't think everybody got that. I don't from, think so. From looking at it, some people didn't realize that MVP. Forty three percent of the homies said Aaron Rodgers. Yeah. I, yeah, I'm not. Uh, listen, my first look here is the homies went a little too chalk. Okay, I'm a little disappointed in the homies. All right, little disappointed so far. No, but I think, I mean, that's 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 real. It, uh, the, the, I, including playoffs is hard for you know. It's, including the playoffs changes because you your don't, thought about you don't, Rogers. You don't want to just throw out what happened for 17 games because of what happened in one game in the playoffs, right? I like know. I, I see that the value in because it's almost like if you make it a postseason inclusive award it's like the postseason the most important game so well, i know you're gonna race sometimes you, you can you can be like i you had an average year for 17 games and right. all of a sudden got hot in the playoffs and we're gonna say what you're the best quarterback in football just because you got hot there yeah, yeah okay it was a great year you were clutch when you had to be but yes i understand what you're saying so including- rogers is disappointing yes it's disappointing we expect more from aaron Rodgers than divisional round at totally. home like i talked about this before the other day you know, again, I know there's been some articles written up there lately about in Green Bay about, you know, Rodgers is too careful with the football. There's no doubt. I mean, he is. You know, a little bit is a little bit has been baked into him because he had to be for so long because there was no wiggle room because they weren't that great. So if he didn't play kind of perfect and, you know, and if he turned the ball over, they couldn't win. So he kind of got into that. And, yes, there's too many throws, and this is why he, to me, you know, again, I know he's played better football than Josh Allen and Patrick Mahomes, but he's not as good as they are. He's just not, mm. you know, because those guys, they don't leave anything on the field. If they see somebody open by, by three inches, 40 yards down the field, they f- crank it back and rifle it in there. Rodgers is more calculated. He's going to kind of go, eh, there's a little risk involved in that one. I'll check it down. Okay, that's cool. It's not always going to win you the big playoff games because a lot of people are only open by three inches in the playoff games. And you got to be able to throw it in there. That was the disappointment with Rodgers in the, the 49ers game. You know, there was five or six plays where you just go, you're Aaron Rodgers. Right. Stand in there and rifle that in there. Don't look for the easy sh- sh- you know, completion here and be efficient. It wasn't the right play all the time. So would you have taken your MVP vote away from Rodgers? No, I would have gone with Rodgers, too. I, I would have. You know, again, th- what I've tried to explain to people, because I think I've confused people, because on TV a few times I've gone, no, Josh Allen and Mahomes are the two best quarterbacks in football. They're the two best quarterbacks. They are. Now, that doesn't mean they had the best year. Did they consistently play at their A-plus level the whole year like Rodgers did? No. But – their A-plus game is greater than Rodgers' A-plus game. That's what I tried to explain to people. Yeah. So like you saw in the playoffs, for the most part, you know, those guys can do some magical things. 
Cup and Brady tied for second, 13% of the vote by the homies there. Yeah. And Josh Allen, who was, I believe, a write-in candidate. <laughs> He was eight percent of the vote. He, I mean, Josh Allen should should have been in that conversation. The, still, the fact that Josh Including Allen is in the Pro Bowl, I, I almost thought about it with Josh Allen. I mean, Josh Allen is, I, I don't know, he's the greatest one man show in football. Period. I don't, there's there's no other way to say it. You it, think it, he's the front runner for MVP next year? Well, he's going to be right there in that conversation between the talent they have. You know, again, now they got a new offensive coordinator and things. There, they need another weapon. As you, I think you've heard them kind of say lately, they need another guy there. To, to protect Allen and, and make their offense better. But, yes, who's going to be right in the thick of that conversation? One homie voted for the refs. Oh, yeah. They're great. They're the real MVP. Holy shit. Offensive player of the year. Yeah. Chalk. Again, Cooper Cup, 70% of the vote. Jonathan Taylor got 13% of the vote. So it was a landslide, Cooper Cup, offensive player of the year. It's it's. I don't think it should be a landslide. You know, I, I don't think that, I guess. I guess to me, it's I, I think it's very close between Cooper Cub, Debo Samuel, mm. and um, who else am I missing? Um, Jonathan Taylor? No, no, it wasn't Jonathan Taylor. Oh, and Jamar Chase. Jamar oh. Chase. You know, or one of, yeah, one of those guys. I'm talking about non-quarterback people. Yes. I know we could probably put Burrow in this conversation, too. But, yes, again, those guys are special. Debo Samuel, man, he might be the number one weapon in football right now. So that's where I just look at that and go, like, whoa. I mean, yes. it's, it's and Jamar Chase, again, best corner in football, double team, doesn't matter what the f you do, he's going over 100 yards, and he's going to make, like, three plays where you're going to go, holy shit, I can't believe he did that. Those two you know? made more out of less right? than maybe any other uh, two right. football players. That's what I mean. Cup is a little bit – Cup is amazing. He's really good. He has all the physical ability you want, but there's some system that's involved there. To me – you know, Debo, the system's involved in the far as they're creative with him. He is the system. He is the he, <laughs> Right. Maybe that's the better way to yeah. say it because of his vast skill set. But they're like Debo and Jamar are capable of, oh, there's nothing there for a three-yard slant catch. Oh, wait, they went for a 60-yard touchdown? That's to me where they're another level. Trent Williams got two votes Whoa. for Offensive Player of the Year. Hey, I still, like that. Still one of the best tackles in football, that's for sure. And Aaron Rodgers only got 2% of the vote here because people don't like Well, the to homies give, are smart. They, they don't realize we already did the things. MVP. Right, exactly. you can't do that. That's right. We know that. It's an assault against the rich. Yes. You, know, you get too much, you're like, oh, beat him down. Uh, defensive Player of the Year. This one was close. 37% of the vote goes to tj watt yeah aaron donald 32 percent of the vote and pete notes here is that maybe not everyone read the header that said that this should include the playoffs because i do think if you do include the playoffs i mean that's a it's couple hard. of donald good games and then the super bowl yeah. yeah i think you i believe i did vote for donald the last five or six weeks of the year donald was amazing the playoffs of course he was he was dominant mm -hmm. i mean he really was i think I don't agree with the T.J. Watt thing. I don't. I would not have voted for him to be defensive player of the year. I know the sacks are up there, and every you know it's 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 a great statistical year. He's an amazing player. I'm not trying to say that take that away from him. If we really went for the defensive player of the year thing, like regular season wise, I would have gone with Michael Parsons. Still, mm -hmm. Michael Parsons was more of to me a consistent. You know what do I want to say? juggernaut difference maker on a week-to-week -week basis. Watt, again, I'm not trying to downplay how awesome he was, but to me it came a little bit more in bunches a little, where we just, oh, wait, it was these three games. Or it was, you got like 12 sacks in three games. Uh, that's where you got – so, you know, you look at that. There's just some of it came in bunches, I guess. It just wasn't, to me, as dominant on a weekly basis, I, I guess is what I'm saying and compared that, to Michael I, Parsons. For, for me, too, it's like yeah. that defense got torched a few times, too. And I, 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 I don't know if it I would should be, factor that, that for in. For whatever but reason, just... that doesn't get held on to the defensive player. Yeah. I don't know what that is either. You know, quarterback, if you're, you know, your offense wasn't good and you still had good stats, people hold it against you. But, like, with defense, for whatever reason, you can be on the worst defense, and if you still put up stats, nobody holds it against you. Right, right. Uh, there was one uh, one vote for A.J. Terrell, comma, Chris, take your victory laps for ranking him there you over go. Jeff Okuda. Well, yeah. Well, that, was yes. the whole, that was the full vote yeah. for him. So, congratulations. You got <laughs> a victory you. lap Yeah, well, he in the definitely vote. is uh, – he's A.J. Terrell looks phenomenal, like Okuda's we talked about coming back. Ago. He's coming back. Yep. He'll be stronger than ever. I hope he ever. is. I hope he is. Biting kneecaps. <laughs> Defensive rookie of the year, 97% of the vote, your guy. Micah Parsons. Yeah. Uh, Nick Bolton, who we mentioned before, and uh, Pete mentioned as an under talked about player, got six votes. Yeah. I, I mean, it's got to be Micah. It's got to be right? Micah. All um, right. You know, after that, where you want to look, 
Mm. I don't know where I would go on this one after that. Uh, Eric Stokes, Nate Hobbs, Pete Werner were some other votes here. Yeah, yeah, I know. I'm just trying to think of any ones that other ones that jumped to my mind. You know, I had I said Jalen Phillips and Javon Holland. Those were some rookies that certainly jump out to me. Barrymore was awesome. You know, Stokes was really good. Yeah, uh, I want. I feel like I'm missing somebody else, but uh, I think I think that's that's really the the meat and potatoes of it right there. Michael Parsons, runaway winner of that one. There was one vote for Sam Darnold after week three. He helped a lot of <laughs> defensive rookies uh, out there. And there was one vote for your mom. Yeah, what's up with that? Way to go, Dirty Diana, defensive rookie of the year. Don't who's f- talking about my mom on here? <laughs> who's doing that? Uh, and Sam Darnold, I, I'm certainly look like I ate an L for that last year too. That was an unfortunate yeah, year. Yeah. I thought it looked I good thought at the start, be like the first three weeks. You're like, yeah. all right, this might be the defense yeah. is good, and uh-huh. Sam Darnold's good enough. And yeah. Whoops. Negative um, Ghost Rider. Offensive Rookie of the Year. Yeah. 84 percent of the vote. Easy. Jamar Chase. Right. How could it not be? You know, I, I look at him. You know, Mac Jones. We know he had the great year. Four percent of the vote. Yeah. Um, Two offensive linemen well, got that's the impressive. second and third. I like that Here's about the homies. homies. Creed Humphrey, yeah. 6% of the vote. Right. And Rashawn Slater, Slater, 5%. Rashawn Slater, this, again, I feel like this is about the fourth time I'm saying this so far. Rookie left tackle, already one of the best left tackles in football. Like it's, 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 he's in the conversation. He is, uh, I mean, really, it got to the end of the year where you're like, is anybody ever going to beat him? Mm-hmm. rushing the passer and I, I feel like it was like week 14 or 15 before he let up like his second sack of the year I mean it was really that impressive Jalen Waddle would be the other guy I'd probably look at for sure yep. you know to me you know getting rid of the, getting out of the quarterback conversation uh yeah I think at a top level there you know I do look at, at Jamar Chase and Jalen Waddle as being the the biggest difference maker rookies on the offensive side of the ball. Zach Wilson did get one vote, so it looks like you did oh. vote. You did vote I in did this, vote. Uh, your old, own poll. <laughs> uh, coach of the year. Yeah. What would you do here? Which one? Coach of the year? Yeah. I voted for the guy who got 12% of the vote, Rich Bisaccia. You did. Because I was like, why? I mean, like, right. that, when you think about it, right? Like, think about what that team went through. Right, with a, you lose your head coach, who's basically like the brains of the operation and is your whole coaching staff. It's yeah. like it's a John, you know, better than anyone. Um, and then you have the unfortunate incident that happened with rugs, and you have other off the field problems. And to keep that team all together and continue winning and make it to the playoffs and had a good chance of maybe beating the Bengals in the playoffs, I'm like, man, that that that's an odd situation. That it was he, as odd as it gets. He made work. He made it happen. You're right. No, I, I'm, I'm glad you're giving him love for sure. I am. I mean, that was a tough situation to steady the ship and then, you know, to win some clutch games down the stretch. That's that speaks a lot about it. I don't think I would go with Vrabel. I don't. He was the pick by the homies. 30, I know. 30% of the vote. So I, and then again, Vrabel, I think would probably be my second guy. You know, I see Zach Taylor's got 24% of the vote, but like mm-hmm. to my problem with that is like if we were in like week 16, no, Zach Taylor would have got zero of the votes. And then they beat the Kansas City Chiefs in week 16 yeah. and everyone's like, is Zach Taylor coach of the year candidate? Yeah. We were talking about firing him three weeks ago, but now no. he's a coach of the year candidate. But this includes the you postseason know? too. I, I know, so you're, you're right, you're right. I, you know, this is where it is It is hard, but my vote during the year would have certainly gone to LaFleur. Like I told you then, I'm going to yeah. say it now again. LaFleur has got to had to deal with a lot. How many games is the guy got to win every year before he finally gets some consideration here you know for the job or actually gets the the award well if he can do it with uh without aaron Rodgers, he oh, definitely think that'll do it i think finally that might that might get it sean mcveigh got 10 percent of the vote kyle shanahan got 10 percent of the vote i kind of was hoping that rich basaccia would get assistant coach of the year in the actual awards yeah right, right. he actually was an assistant yeah, right. coach and now you're a head coach yeah and- I think that would have been kind of cool, but Dan Quinn won that. There's one. some good, you know. I see, you know, we got a vote for Brian Dayball. Yes. Lou and Arumo, Raheem Morris. Uh-huh. I think those are phenomenal votes. Uh, yeah, yeah, they're assistants, but they're high end assistants, difference making assistants for their football teams. Yeah, for sure. Uh, so the homies spreading the love to even some assistants out there. And Mike Tomlin got a vote, uh, who I think, who still is never won coach of the year. Yeah, that's kind of crazy. Who one of these, they should just give it to him, even though he's not deserving, because yeah. it's like a career. Uh, lifetime Achievement Award. Comeback Player of the Year, 70% of the vote goes to Joe Burrow. I think you would have probably voted for the guy that had 23% of the vote, Nick Bosa. It would have been close. You know, I know we had this conversation during the year, and when I think we were having it around like week 12 or 13, and I was like... About Dak Prescott. Yes, and I yes. was like, wait, Nick Bosa's the guy. Nick Bosa's dominating. I mean, Nick Bosa's in Defensive Player of the Year conversation at that point. You know, Dak Prescott... We weren't talking about offensive player of the year or anything. 
you know. And then Joe Burrow came along and kind of went on fire there at the end of the year. And it's hard to deny that. I mean, to me, it is definitely Burrow or Nick Bosa. Definitely. I. Hmm, that's a tough one. I think the way it ended up, and you include the playoffs, yeah, I'm going to go with Burrow. Yeah, I am. I'm going to go with Burrow. I'm not, I'm not going to hide away from that, even though Bosa is, without question, one of the five best defensive players in all of football. But the 49ers are going to have to trade him to get Aaron Rodgers. Is the unfortunate <laughs> thing. <laughs> They're going to have to pay him and Debo Samuel. They got to pay a lot of. Season. I know they got to pay they both of them. They got some things they got to wiggle around for sure. Which is why people say whether they like what they saw from Trey Lance or not. I mean, he's their future because it, they need that rookie contract quarterback yeah i think so i think that's definitely a, a, a piece of that puzzle damn okay performance of the year 32 percent of the vote and this is what i voted for josh allen's divisional round versus the chiefs where he had four touchdowns 329 yards that was the damn okay performance of the year according to the homies i don't know how it can't be right i mean that just was again we know mahomes was great in that game too but i mean josh allen I think if everybody went back and you watched the highlights of the game, you'd go, oh, wait, yeah, it was Allen. Allen made more, oh, my gosh, whoa, whoa, what a scramble. Whoa, how did he get out of that? Whoa, they pulled two guards and he just lowered his shoulder and ran over a linebacker and ran for 15 yards more after that. Yeah. It's like that kind of shit. Mahomes is amazing, but, yes, I, I'm with you. I think that that, to me, would be one, and two would be the third one on our list, Aaron Donald in the Super Bowl. Mm. It would be. For where he took over and how he played in the second half of the game, I think when you take the circumstances of the game itself, the offense struggling, OBJ hurt, no Tyler Higby, you know, they got injuries there on that side of the ball. The demons had to step up. He had to step up, and he did. That, that, that to me, would be up there. Yeah, Aaron Donald was third. He got 14% of the vote from the homies. Jonathan Taylor's 185-yard, five-touchdown game versus the Bills was number two. Joe Burrow, over 500 yards versus the Ravens, was the fourth most. There's Mahomes. Yeah, there it for is. For that game okay. versus the Bills. You got some other games. That oh, Herbert in Week 18. Against the Raiders. Burrow in Week 17. Game. Yeah. Wow. Burrow in Week 17, as awesome as that was against the Chiefs, the Chiefs with the 446 yards, the star of that day to, to me was more Jamar Chase. Jamar Chase yeah. I, I, I mean, the, the guy caught a 10-yard out route and just ran by the fastest defense in football, and they couldn't catch him. I mean, there just was too many special plays there that day. Matthew Stafford got a little love for the last drive of the Super he should. Bowl. As clutch as it gets. And uh, one vote for any Tua game. So Tua, and you just pick any game, <laughs> and you're going to give that the damn okay. We didn't even talk about Josh Allen torching the Patriots like nobody else did either. Right. I mean, that's another one. I know it got some votes there, but, I mean, nobody's ever done that to New England. Five touchdown passes, four incompletions in the game, just dominate the Patriots, a defense that was top five all year. That was another one that's probably up in that, you know, top of the list category for me there. So the homies went chalk, but – if it's the right answer, it's the right answer. What are you it, supposed to do? You can't fight it. No, I hear you. You're right. I, I think there was, it was a year where I don't think there was a ton of under the radar like, oh, yeah. wow, we're really screwing this guy over or that guy, whatever. Uh, so I think we got it right. I do. I think, I think that's Hopefully. good. Hopefully. All good. right. And then you know you know what I got going this week, right? What? Um, more medicine on my schlong okay. to get rid of my poison ivy. Right. Um, you were yeah. interested in that. No, yeah. seriously, I'm going to Combine. Going oh my to combine gosh. tomorrow. Okay. Going to be an indie. So we're going to do that the next two days. It will be a different podcast on Wednesday. All right. Right. We're going to have no, I don't think you'll be here for that. I've got a para, Olympics just ended. Yeah. Which I did that. You for, got Paralympics coming up. Paralympics coming up here in just a few days. Um, so yeah, I, I dip in for one podcast and then I dip out. Okay. I'll lose my tan. Next yeah. time you see me much paler. Yeah. Um, but before we go, we do have to lay oh, one Lee. more team. I'm so sorry. Into the ground. I forgot. I, look, what if we forgot to do it? And there's just a dead body there oh. laying there for another week and a half. I know. That's not good. It would have been bad. It starts to be smelly. Uh, so, Kristen, if you're back there, do, do we have – oh, there it is. All right. For the final time of uh, 2022. 22. Because the next time – no, I guess we could do it at the end of this year when teams are officially eliminated. You're so. right. Don't get too deep into okay, this. So yeah, don't get emotional. <laughs> All right. Here lie the Cincinnati Bengals, or Bengals, as you like to call them. Just a couple plays from winning it all. A team that now seems built for the long haul. Maybe Burrow and Zach were motivated by something that was much debated when I ranked them dead last in the Super Brawl. Remember that? <laughs> you did. And people remember that, and yeah. people tweeted me, calling me out on what a horrible last place pick that was. They proved you wrong. They did prove me wrong. They did. They're ready to brawl. 
And we will do that again. Right. And I would imagine they're going to shoot up the rankings, even though they are now dead. (laughs) (laughs) They'll be resurrected. I would hope so. I would hope so. All right. Well, see you, Bengals. It was good knowing you. Bengals, you're gone. You stayed alive longer than we thought you were gone. Oh, my gosh. Than anyone thought. You wouldn't die, actually. Right. (laughs) What's wrong with you? Die already. Yeah. I know. The Bengals are amazing. They're one of those teams that is, it's two players have changed the perception of their team around completely. And now they're a cool team. They are. It's like you're going to go you, into next year and they're going to be people that are going to pick the Bengals. Without a doubt. All. The uniforms are cool. Yep. Like, right? I mean, I, yeah, no, they weren't my favorite, but they did improve them with the Nikeification of what they did. And then I think, yeah, you had those two guys, Chase and Burrow. Yeah, Burrow is – he's taking that Mahomes – you know, cool guy. Oh, yeah. The young kids like him. I mean, that's that's he's definitely got that angle and vibe going. He's I'm around my little boy and see it too much. I would think for the next five years, he's going to be, you know, top five cool quarterback. Yeah. He'll be in that. He'll be Josh Allen. You got Mahomes. You got Burrow. Mm, yeah, I mean, like those, you look at like young They're people be- that buy the jersey. They're going to be the. You could be three. You're, you're you're right. You know you'll have Kyler involved in those conversations yeah, slipping, and slipping a little. You know, bit. yeah. We'll see who else. You know, Deshaun Watson. We'll see what he comes mm, back. Nice. I know he's got some off the field issues to deal with. To but you're right. Some. I think when you look at coolness and just like attraction to young fan and all that, he's going to be at the top of the oh, list. Oh, I forgot Kirk Cousins. Oh, yeah, how, yeah, that's right. What, you disrespected him? <laughs> yeah. What an asshole. There One more go. time you did it. <laughs> One more time. Put him in the top three. All right, that's it. I'll be at the Combine starting Tuesday. You can find all – we're going to interviews Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. That's, that's all gonna we're going to cool. do. You're right. pumped about that. I definitely am. When's the last time you've been to the Combine? It's two years ago, so that's we missed right. it last year. I love going to the Combine, get to meet up with some old friends, talk ball, get to know a few things that are you know going on behind the scenes. It's always great. But interviews with coaches, players, going to do the show there, PFT with Florio. Okay. Florio would not be there. He's still hiding in a bunker from COVID, but one day we'll get him out again. What happened last time you were at the Combine? It, Matt, Matt's trying to oh, jog I, your memory. I puked, yes. In oh. the, uh, right here. There it is. So there's the clip. Boom. Look at a good soldier wow. I am to go to work like that, though. Right? And Matt Casey being the asshole he is, I just told him I'd throw up. He was like, oh, you can still do the show, though, right? And I was just like, Bruh. yeah, sure, no problem. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> so, yep. wait, I, I, I vaguely remember this now. And did Mike know you were going to throw up right there? Yeah. He what knew, a professional. I, he knew all along. What a professional. I was, I he just texted, kept working. Florio and Matt Casey about 30 minutes, 40 minutes before the show. Like, I really don't feel good. I've been throwing up all night. Yeah. I don't know. I haven't thrown up in a little while. Maybe I'll be okay. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Matt's denying this ever happened. He <laughs> yeah. says that you you kept it uh, a secret. Yeah. And sure. we would never pressure anyone sure. to work sure. when they're not feeling good. So, no, I, knowing you, though, you were like, I, I was going to do it. But I'm going to do it. Do yeah, it. You, right. you I wouldn't want to do it. So then I get close to the convention center and I'm like literally like 30 feet from the door and I'm like, mm-hmm. oh shit, I'm going to throw up again. And I'm like, oh damn, it's back. And there I am throwing up in the shrubs. Here yep. we are. But look at look at Florio. I mean, Matt just like- Nagy was walking out the door and he was like literally saying hello to me as I was throwing up. I was like, hey, go to- Did he know you were throwing up? Yeah, he definitely saw something. I mean, he knew I wasn't sitting there smelling the shrubs. <laughs> uh, that's for sure. Uh, yeah, that was a rough wow. one. I went to bed not long after that. And then you missed a day after that? I or missed no? a day after that. I mean, I had to go to the doctor. What, what was wrong? What was, I, I just- ate a hamburger off LaGuardia floor. LaGuardia Airport floor. Well, that was a bad decision. Do you think? You think? I'm pretty <laughs> sure that's what happened. Yeah. Yeah. And on that note, so, so the five second rule, the five second rule get, doesn't, doesn't. I was in a rush. I'm the cleanest. Per- I'm a germ freak. I don't know what I was doing. I was in a rush. I was trying to get the flight. I was starving. I thought the burger didn't really hit the ground. It had paper wrapping around it. Yeah. Obviously, I was wrong. Yeah. All right. And I paid for it. And if that happens this time on the trip, you'll throw the burger away. I, I you'll get a new I burger. Will. I've learned. I've self scouted. <laughs> don't do that. All, All right, right, everybody. Peace out out there. Be good. Good don't luck out any, there. Yeah. Don't eat any hamburgers off the airport floor. Good deal. You the man. Good luck with Paralympics. Thank you. Everybody be good. Check us out all week. Combine. We'll be there. Be square. Peace out, homies. Clap Clap it it up. Yo, yo, what's up? Come on, man. Subscribe on YouTube to Chris Sims Unbuttoned Podcast. I need you. Please hit the subscribe button. Please. Hi, I'm Mike Tirico, and thanks for watching. Make sure to hit subscribe for the latest news and highlights from NBC Sports.